According to a February 22 analysis, half of all U.S. abortions in 2020 were medical abortions, which is a procedure that uses medication to end a pregnancy. This number is expected to rise with the recent overturning of Roe v. Wade, so we thought the timing was right for a primer on emergency contraception and abortion pills. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. You've probably heard of Plan B, Ella, the morning after pill. Mifepristone and misoprostol, are they the same thing? And how do they work? To begin, there are essentially two categories here, emergency contraception pills and abortion pills. Emergency contraception, also known as morning after pills, are meant to prevent pregnancy after unprotected sex. The abortion pills, mifepristone and misoprostol, are meant to end an established pregnancy. Emergency contraception pills, like Plan B, reduce the risk of pregnancy after unprotected sex by delaying or preventing ovulation or fertilization. They are available over-the-counter and must be taken within three days of unprotected sex. The later they are taken in that 72-hour window, the less effective they can be. These pills are in a class of medications called progestins. Progestins are a synthetic form of progesterone, a hormone that plays a large role in the menstrual cycle and pregnancy. Emergency contraception pills like Ella contain ulipristal acetate, which prevents or delays ovulation by binding to progesterone receptors and makes it difficult for a fertilized egg to embed in the uterus by decreasing endometrial thickness. Unlike Plan B, Ella is not available over the counter, though places like Planned Parenthood have made it possible to obtain a prescription via telehealth. It is also effective for a bit longer than Plan B, up to five days after unprotected sex, and its effectiveness doesn't seem to change based on when you take it during that window. The choice between these comes down to factors like the number of days since unprotected sex occurred and factors such as weight, with Ella working better for people in a specific weight range. Neither of these types of morning after pills terminates established pregnancies. They are not effective if taken while already pregnant. Increased doses of certain oral contraceptives may also be used as emergency contraception in some cases, but require a prescription. So none of these are considered abortion pills. A medical abortion occurs when medication is used to terminate an existing pregnancy. Specifically, a mifepristone tablet is approved by the FDA to be taken up to 70 days after the first day of the last menstrual period, so in the first 10 weeks of gestation. This blocks hormones that are essential to maintaining the pregnancy. Within 24 to 48 hours of taking mifepristone, misoprostol is taken to stimulate contractions and empty the uterus, thus completing the abortion. This procedure is accompanied by bleeding and cramps that last between two and four weeks. Prior to December 2021, these medications could only be obtained in person from a certified provider. However, that restriction was lifted by the FDA. So depending upon where you live, mifepristone and misoprostol can be provided via telehealth with the pills shipped to your home. However, this isn't considered legal in all U.S. states, though some international services ship them to all states regardless of local laws. We should note here that drug purchases from foreign internet sources are not the FDA-approved version. There can be complications after taking these pills, including tissue remaining in the uterus, which can be life-threatening. Because of this, follow-up with a physician is strongly recommended. While the medications we've discussed in today's episode are generally considered safe and effective, we always recommend discussing with your healthcare provider whenever possible before choosing to take them. Hey, did you find this episode useful? You might also enjoy this previous episode about abortion access and public health. We'd appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe to the channel down below, and consider going on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillaholm, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam 